I've been photographed so often by my friend Michael for this kind of thing. I'm approaching the status of professional settler. I think a, a nice shot of you looking into the camera will get the most of your character. That's quite good, actually. I'm going to try a couple of those. That's it. We'll get your eyes. That's what we want. Good. I'm going to take a few more of those, just look at, towards the camera, that's it. Okay, I'm going to check these now. I had the sofa made fairly recently, and I deliberately made it, had it made rather hard. So Why is that? It's easier to get out of. No, no, I hate the, the sofas where you feel like you're... Turtle on its back. <laughs> so where does your interest in art come from? It's a strange story. Um, there may be a hereditary element, but it certainly doesn't come from directly from that. Um, my mother was not an intellectual, but she came from quite a strongly intellectual family who had been, in a minor sense, eminent Victorians. And one of them, not somebody for whom I'm directly descended, but a collateral, um, was a man called Vernon Lushington, mm -hmm. uh, who was the person responsible for introducing the young Bone Jones to Rossetti. When I was a child in Jamaica, and there were no museums and so on, I suddenly became, I was a great reader, partly because I think it was a retreat, um, and I became enraptured with archaeology, yeah. specifically with ancient Egypt. And um, my favorite reading was the two volumes of Howard Carter's account of the excavation of two Tutankhamen. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so when I came to England, there were museums, so I started going to them. I went to Oxford very young. I won a scholarship when I was just a month past my 17th oh, birthday. Okay. Uh, and elected to go up early and do my national service later. Um, so I was much younger than everybody else, and it's all those people you've seen in the political press, like, who are now largely retired, mm. like, like uh, Michael Heseltine, Lord Heseltine, uh, Sir Peter Tapsell, the father of the House of Commons. They were all young and bouncy, and older than me. And I wanted, I had ambitions to be a, pro, uh, to be a writer for that time. And I wanted to write for the undergraduate papers. So I went to them and they were extremely superior to me and said, oh, we've got people to already do that. Then it was the early 50s, they looked at me sharply. And they said, oh, but you go to museums, don't you? And it was the period when literary intellectuals didn't have anything to do with the visual arts. You know, they sort of fall apart of it. So they said, oh well, you can write about art. So then I went to the Air Force. Then I came out of the Air Force and went straight in. I came out on a Friday and on Monday I had already had my interviews. I was working at London Advertising Agency. Um, and I started writing reviews at two pounds a time, slipping out of the office 
In fact, the coverage was much better than it is now. Uh, art reviewers to do all the uh, uh, galleries. So we'd nip out and do whatever it is. Um, and one of my contemporaries uh, was by that time a producer at the BBC. Um, and he rang me up and said, uh, oh well, you didn't have any track record. I had already begun deputizing with John Ross and the Son of Times. He said, you didn't have any track record, but now you do, and perhaps we can use you. And they were trying to get new blood in uh, for the critics, which was so famous that Peter Sellers made, did a famous parody of it. Um, and they, all the old state of the, the stalwarts, like um, Pete, Stephen Potter and Marguerite Lasky, were still aboard. So they gave me a trial, and that kind of established me in the art world. Okay. And then in '59, Thames and Hudson asked me to do a World of Art book for them. Um, and the World of Art book was Movements and Arts of 1945, which they have never been able to replace. It's been through five editions and still in print. And that was the first book you wrote? Uh, well, there were poetry books and that kind of thing before. Okay. It was the first proper art book. I think I wrote a book on Rubens before that. Um, for a firm which print, printed in Czechoslovakia. Um, and, uh, well, it was quite a struggle getting that book together. It taught me how to make an art book.